We've already talked a little bit about vectors in this class, um, and we've defined them, but we haven't really talked much about how you use them and how you work with them. And that's what we're going to start digging into today, because a lot of what you're going to deal with for the rest of the semester has to do with vectors. So we need to really understand how we add and subtract vectors, how we describe them, and just in general, how we work with them. Before we talk about how we work with them, we need a little review of what they are. So a vector is a quantity that has both a magnitude, say five meters per second, and a direction, so to the north. Or so far, we've used positive and negative a lot because we've just worked in one dimension. We've just worked along a straight line. A scalar just has magnitude. So sometimes there can be a scalar that sort of if you add a direction to it could be a vector. Something like speed is a scalar. So you would just say your speed is five meters per second. And then if you add a direction, that becomes a vector. Other things are really kind of always a scalar. Something like temperature, you can't really put a direction to temperature. So you can't really make it into a vector. When we deal with vectors, we have to always take into consideration that direction. Again, thinking about when we worked in one dimension, if I went positive five meters and then negative three meters, my total distance traveled might have been eight meters, but my displacement was only two meters because I have to take into account those positive and negative signs. You've actually kind of added vectors before in your life, but maybe didn't know it. So this is a sort of cartoonish map of downtown Lynchburg taken from the visitor center. And say I started to go for a walk there and I walk three blocks up Main Street. I take a left onto 8th Street and go three blocks there. We could see each of these as a displacement. And a displacement for three blocks in this direction a displacement for three blocks along 8th Street, and then we'll go two blocks, two blocks, and one more block. Each of these is a vector, right? It has some length, three blocks, and a direction. Um, we're not going to worry too much about cardinal directions now, but you can see that each one of these has a direction. What we've done is sort of add each of these displacements together. I had a displacement from here to here, and then from here to here, here to here, here to here, and here to here, so that my total displacement would be just from where I started my walk to where I ended my walk. That's really how we add vectors. We always say that we add them head to tail, which means we join the head and the tail. So a little anatomy of a vector, because you may not have heard those terms very much before. The head of the vector is sort of the direction it's pointing. It's where the arrow is. If it's a displacement, it's where you end up. Um, and the tail of the vector is the starting point. Thinking of adding these vectors together is usually pretty easy when we think about displacements. It is a little bit more challenging for people when we think of adding vectors that are velocity vectors or acceleration or forces, but we use the same basic ideas. So if you think about it in terms of adding displacement vectors, that will get you in the right direction. So the first rule of vector addition is that you don't talk about vector addition. I know that was a really bad Fight Club joke, but I figure you're stuck listening to me. I can at least make bad jokes every now and then. So the first rule of vector addition is that the vector sum of a and b is found by adding vector a plus vector b. We do head to tail, so that the head of vector a is matched with the tail of vector b, and then vector s, the sum of the two, goes from the tail of a to the head of b. So that's the vector sum of a and b. What would we do if our vectors were like this? They weren't automatically put in the same place for us. Well, vectors can be picked up and moved around. It doesn't matter where A and B start off, their sum is the same. I would just move A and then move B and get the same vector S as their sum from before. 
So it doesn't matter where they are to start, when we add a and b, we would get that same vector s. And graphically, it's found by doing it head to tail. We'll look at how to do it sort of numerically or algebraically in a little bit, but it's really important to understand how we do it graphically first, because that's how you really understand what you're doing in vector addition. Okay, so given vectors a and b below, so here's a, which is a horizontal vector, b is a shorter vertical vector pointing downwards, which of the following, one, two, three, four, or five, shows the addition of those two vectors.